Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A McDonald's drive through brought to a standstill by a couple of sleeping customers. Money meant for school kids goes missing, and tonight we're learning where it may have gone. That money donated by parents in Gross Point Woods to a PTO bank account ended intended to fund activities for elementary school students. And now the account is frozen and one of the parents is under scrutiny. Sean Lay picks up the story from Monteith Elementary on Crook Road near Mac. Good evening from Gross Point Woods. The key question to this case tonight is just how much money is missing from the PTO account. A shade pulled down and no answer at the Gross Point Woods home of the treasurer of the parent teacher organization connected to Monteith Elementary School on Cook Road. We wanted to ask the treasurer about money donated by parents to the PTO's Flagstar bank account. Cash meant to be focused on students, their education and activities. The PTO putting an emergency freeze on that account after seeing unauthorized charges for lavish entertainment spending at places like Greek Town Casino, Boyne Mountain Resort, and then daily maintenance spending like at Bell Tire. The treasurer did not come to the door to respond to our questions, but people in Gross Point Woods do have questions about what's going on here. He admitted it and he apologized and wants to make it right, but nonetheless, that doesn't make it right. The PTO alerting Monteith families with this letter that reads, quote, a potential financial irregularity has been identified in the Monteith PTO bank account resulting from one individual's actions. All accounts, including PayPal, have been frozen, and this matter has been referred to the Gross Point Woods Public Safety Department. That is not good. Yeah, that, that is not good. We know tonight Gross Point Woods Public Safety has launched an investigation. What's unknown? just how much money is missing. It's unfortunate because that's a good school with a lot of good people there. Back here live now late today, we had a nice long conversation with the attorney for the parent who is also that treasurer now under investigation. The attorney says, look, no charges have been filed here, but they want to make it clear they are cooperating fully with this newly launched investigation. They think the investigation will be quick and without making any admissions, Devin and Kimberly, uh, they are saying every dime will be returned to that account. Back to you. Yeah, every dime. So, Sean, is there any ballpark figure on how much money is gone? That's the $60,000 question. Without it being $60,000, the financial review from the Public Safety Department has just begun, so they just don't know right now. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sean. We've learned the home of a Roseville City Councilman was raided last night as part of an MSP narcotics investigation. Mara McDonald is live in Roseville tonight with what we know about this still developing story, Mara. Kimberly, I spoke to the councilman in question about 10 minutes ago, and here's the situation. He confirms that, yes, there was a police raid at his home last night. He also tells us that really it has nothing to do with him, but what he refers to as the tenants in his home. Yes, he lives at this home, but there are two other people in this home as well. He was arrested. He was booked. However, he has not been charged with anything by the Macomb County prosecutor, nor has he been arraigned. It is our policy at this station not to name individuals who have not been arraigned. So we're not going to name him at this point. What I can tell you is MSP was out on this street last night at that home for a narcotics investigation. And as you might imagine, on a small, quiet street, everybody noticed. All the cops were there. Lights were all flying up like crazy. When they went into the house, they brought the dog in to do the sweep around normal. And one guy started getting very belligerent with the cops, being unruly with them too. Back here alive, whether that unruly person is the councilman or whether they took him in on some other arrest charge, not clear yet. All we know is that he does confirm there was a raid at his home last night. He says he's embarrassed by the whole thing, had nothing to do with him, but the people who he calls the tenants in his home. As soon as this develops, as soon as there are charges in this case, we can do more. We're live in Roseville tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara, you ever been in a drive through line that just doesn't seem to be moving? Well, this one actually was not because according to police, the drivers of two separate cars in line had both fallen asleep. Larry Spruill has more on a strange coincidence and the people who are now in trouble for more than just holding up the line. 
Police say everything happened over the weekend at this McDonald's in Troy at the intersection of Rochester and Big Beaver Road. Two men inside their own cars, sitting in the drive through not going anywhere. Police say there's a reason why. There was a report of drivers passed out over the wheel in the drive through waiting for their food. And the two were holding things up, says Sergeant Megan Lehman with Troy Police, leaving a McDonald's employee here in Troy on Rochester and Big Beaver Road. No other choice but to call for help. They've been sitting there for like 10, 15 minutes too, so I don't know. You said you believe that the people inside all the cars are sleeping except the last one? Yeah. He's asleep too. Yeah. Officers investigated, found out they were both driving drunk. We're not showing their faces because they have not been arraigned in court yet. Okay, well, where are you right now? Do you know where you're no, at? No, you're not putting your seatbelt on. You're I have your seatbelt. You're getting out of the car. The first driver, which is a 24 year old male from Troy, 0.16, and the second one was 0.13. Nancy and Paul Colombo heard all about the holdup. Uh, I don't know how they could do that. <laughs> That's I, unbelievable. Yeah. I can't believe it happened. I really can't. <laughs> I can't believe they got here. Meanwhile, police are glad no one got hurt. So their cars were both in drive. So they, you know, were fortunate. They kept their foot on the brake while they were passed out. And again, the two have not been arraigned in court, but they have, they were arrested and they have been charged with DUI. We're live tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. Strange. I told you, strange coincidence. All right, Larry. Oh, yeah. All right, Detroit rapper and former member of Eminem's Shady Records, Obi Trice, is facing a gun charge connected to a shooting at his house. Back on December 6th of last year, police arrested Trice after his girlfriend's 18-year-old son was accidentally shot in the leg as he and Trice struggled over a gun. Well, now Trice is charged with misdemeanor possession of an unregistered firearm. If found guilty, he could face up to 90 days in jail. An arrest is made in connection to hidden cameras found inside a Shelby Township tanning salon. A 38-year-old Macomb Township man was taken into custody on multiple felony charges and search warrants were executed at his house. Last week, an off-duty police officer found the hidden cameras at the Chili Peppers tanning salon located on 25 Mile and Van Dyke. Some parents of possible victims say they plan to file police reports. Dan Gilbert's return to the public spotlight today came with a big gift to the city. It involves a major downtown development and the University of Michigan. Business Center Rob Maloney with how millions more dollars are now committed to that project and what it's going to mean. Rob? When the failed jail project went haywire a decade ago, Dan Gilbert weighed in and said, look, you simply can't put a jail at the gateway to the city. He wanted something better, and now we know it's going to become this, the University of Michigan Innovation Center, putting the university at the heart of Detroit's revitalization. And today it received an eye-popping financial backing by none other than real estate mogul and Detroit native Stephen Ross. My initial gift will be $100 million to make this happen. $100 million. Stephen Ross isn't a known quantity here in Detroit. He's more famous for developing New York City, owning the Miami Dolphins, and donating a U of M business school. He admits Dan Gilbert really convinced him to come home. Because I think he's really sparked at least my enthusiasm, and I think this country and the city's enthusiasm for Detroit. And I can't say enough about him. So it's great. This after Gilbert made his first post-stroke public appearance, Gilbert donated the jail site land of the project. I'm just really thrilled that guys that quality and companies the quality are related are now looking and potentially doing stuff downtown. We have to keep that going on, which we will. Wayne County Executive Warren Evans is smiling tonight. And what a facelift for that gateway to Detroit, uh, from you know an old half-finished jail to, to uh, the Innovation Center. And so is Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan. To come back with a $100 million check uh, to help a major project for the city, it's just a great day. Well, here's the uh, situation. It's going to cost about $750 million total, at least by original design. It's going to take $300 million in philanthropy, $100 coming first from Stephen Ross. The hope is that they'll get more. So the hope is they'll get the thing going here, too, before too long. Back to you. He also hinted there were other announcements coming on other businesses coming to Detroit, which was kind of uh, interesting and intriguing. But, Rod, back to this innovation center. Lay out the vision for that a little bit. 
Well, you know, the vision uh, that Stephen Ross has for it comes from something they've done at Cornell University in New York City. They are putting an incubator, business incubator, uh, put in dorms, put in a hotel, uh, put in other other things that they can build around this thing to create uh, a real learning center in downtown Detroit and transform the neighborhood, but also the entire city. It's going to be stunning to watch. $100 million coming through just like that today. All right.